folks, so today's video is my review of the Kat Von D Shade Light Eye Palette. Uh, if you guys are curious for makeup looks that you can do with this palette, there will be a playlist on my channel, it'll be there, or you can click playlist and they're all there. Um, basically, I use a palette for five looks, Monday to Friday, and then on Saturday I review it, give you guys my opinions, uh, who I think it's good for, is it worth it, that sort of jazz. So I actually went back and tried to find out when this was originally released, or at least when I picked it up, and it's not in my Sephora receipt, so it leads me to believe that I bought this prior to like November 2014. So this palette has been in my life for like a good while now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this came out sometime like mid-2014, which is like so bizarre to me, but I don't know, I have like no concept of time like at all anymore, but uh, I feel like I've had this for a good while. I also feel like this palette is like a staple palette in a lot of people's like makeup collections by now. Um, it's been out for such a long time that I feel like a lot of people have it, which is one of the reasons why I used it this week and it was also requested for me to do it. So I was like, yeah, sure, I have that palette. All right, so a bit about this palette. Um, I believe Kat Von D designed this palette to just be like a palette that's good for uh, shaping and like sculpting out the eye and just kind of going in with like a matte look um, there's so many different colors in this like I feel like there's like your neutrals your cool tones your warm tones um, I used to bring it out every now and then just if I was using a bunch of colorful eyeshadows that needed uh, neutral mattes all right so a little bit about price currently on the Sephora website this palette is $62 uh, Canadian so obviously more or less depending on where you are that price is for 12 eyeshadows now obviously these ones are a bit bigger than these and I should have you know that when I was looking up the price and everything and um, size of the pans and whatnot, I was actually really surprised to find out that these eyeshadows are only uh, 2.6 grams and these ones are only 1.13 grams. So to put that into perspective, the Suva Beauty eyeshadows are twice the size of these big ones and like four times the size of these little ones. And so these to me now are like deceptively large. <laughs> um, it really makes it feel like you're getting more eyeshadow than you actually are. So that's a little weird. So yeah, that's definitely something to consider when taking into account the price of this. Um, I never put two and two together. I looked at it and assumed that the eyeshadows were much larger than that. Maybe that's my own bad, but um, to think that they're really actually that small is a little weird. So basically, I have a feeling that these pans are like really, really shallow because obviously it looks like you're getting a lot of eyeshadow and you're really not. Um, so yeah, if you're somebody who cares about grams of eyeshadows, just keep that in mind when sort of figuring out the price. I feel like so many other palettes have so much more product, it's a little bizarre. For actual consistency of eyeshadows, they're definitely more on the soft side. They still come off opaque. Um, but they're they're really soft so when you dip a brush into it you are going to get that kick up um, the consistency if you are familiar with um, Anastasia modern renaissance palette the mattes are very much this consistency of those mattes um, they're very very similar in the sense that I feel like you could dip your brush in and it's going to kick up a lot of product but I feel like if you tap it off and apply it to the eye it's not going to result in too much fallout um, I didn't have too much fallout with these obviously the black you want to be careful when applying any black eyeshadow to the lid the fallout can be really bad for that um, also this sort of brown shade any of the darker shades really you just kind of want to be a little bit more mindful if you're going in with those now one thing I will say with them being softer like that is I feel like you're going to hit pan on these a lot quicker um, just because you are kicking up so much extra product when you're using your brush in them they're not really densely packed all right so one thing I do want to compare is just this palette to the Vizart uh, neutral matte there's a lot of shades in this palette that are very similar to each other and are dupes of each other. So basically when comparing these eyeshadows, it's good to know that they're both good, but they're both good in different ways. But then when comparing these two products together, you're basically taking into account price and consistency of the eyeshadows. Um, both are good in their own separate ways, but really what it's gonna come down to is your own personal preference for your matte eyeshadows. Um, the Kat Von D ones, as I mentioned, are very soft. They still have good opacity and they blend out well, um, but they have a little bit of kick out and a little bit more fallout. And so if that's something that you can handle, then I would obviously consider going for this. It's gonna be a much more budget-friendly alternative. Now, I personally prefer the Vizart Neutral Mattes just because they're a little bit more of a stiffer consistency when you dip your brush in, um, but that means that you're using less product to get the same opacity as if you were you know, really digging your brush into one of these. 
Um, so it's a matter of like what eyeshadows are going to last you the longest, then this is obviously going to last you longer because you need less product to get that pigmentation. It's a bit tricky to compare different consistencies unless it's something that you've tried out and felt for yourself. But basically they're both good, it's just you'll go through product a lot faster with this and it's sort of a personal preference. All right, so let's talk a little bit about packaging as well. This is in the original release packaging, so it's like that cardboard packaging. Um, you know, it gets a little cruddy over time. Now, I'm also really bad for the fact that I flip this over like that. It does come with a mirror. Um, I do flip my palettes over like that. It takes up less space when I put them like on my vanity. And so over time, it has gotten a little bit roughed up along the edge, but that's pretty normal. So I do like that the names are on the back of the palette. However, just for me personally, uh, I have no idea how to pronounce like half the names in this palette. <laughs> I just went this brown, that one. I get the creativity and stuff, but like, come on, can you not just call it like taupe? That's just me. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. So overall, who is this palette really designed for and who do I suggest it for? Um, I personally suggest this more for beginners or for people who have a lot of colorful eyeshadows who want like one go-to neutral eyeshadow palette. So basically for beginners, because the eyeshadows are easy enough to use and they blend out well enough that you're gonna get beautiful looks without putting too much effort into it. Um, that's what I feel like this palette is really good for. And then obviously for somebody who's just looking for one neutral palette, then this is good quality and it's fairly inexpensive when the alternative is another like $30. There really isn't any patchiness or inconsistency in formula. All the shades are pretty much the same consistency, which like allows them to blend really nicely together. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that they may have re-released this palette in like a plastic packaging. I'm not sure if that was the shade like face palette, face contour one, or this one, but I think you might be able to get this in like a solid plastic, uh, very similar to the little ones that they did. Um, in, th in that case, if it's still $62 and you get a better case for it, um, then I think it's definitely worth it. So it's something I mentioned in all my palette reviews, definitely take into account um, if it's something that you truly need. I don't suggest spending money on anything you don't think you truly need. And so that's why I always try to suggest who it might be good for. Um, definitely good for beginners who don't have a lot of eyeshadows and then also good for people who uh, want like one neutral palette. Uh, it's a really good staple palette and has pretty much everything in there that you need in terms of neutrals, uh, your highlight shades, your crease shades, your darker shades. So overall, I think it's a great palette and I do suggest it if it's something that you're interested in for your own life. So yeah, that's my overall review of the palette. Hopefully I was able to provide you guys with enough information to make like a smart choice about whether or not you want to purchase it. Don't spend the money that you don't have. If it's not something you need, then you can obviously create looks that I've done throughout the weeks with eyeshadows that you currently have. So while my tutorials are there to show you different looks that you can use with one single palette, I hope to also be able to inspire you guys um, to use similar similar colors in your own collection if it's not a palette that you have. This week we're going into the Urban Decay After Dark palette which I'm super excited about because I'm going to bust out some fun creative colorful looks for you guys hopefully and uh, yeah I hope everyone is doing good and until my next video I'll talk to all you soon. Bye!